photometers, projection devices of all sorts, electronic devices, everything that you could name that you could use, telephotometers, and so on. The electron microscope, I believe, was used by a man at Kodak Park. Everything pointed to the conclusion that the, the objects in the film were true objects, unknown objects, not model objects, and that it was take, taken uh, by Madeline exactly as she told us it was. People with experience, to call upon the, in, the experience of those who had concentrated on uh, the photographic film and reproducing pictures uh, meant more than anything else. It is not just my opinion, it's the opinion of all of the experts. One of these experts was Colonel Coleman von Kivitsky, founder of the audiovisual division of the Royal Hungarian General Staff, who worked as a film expert for the United Nations during the 1960s. Medaline raw refer short 8 millimeter sequence uh, filmed on a flying object in front of her house above the trees are genuine. I was personally on the location and I verified the distance where the UFOs were flying and all the necessary environmental circumstances which excluded any kind of faking this movie film sequence. Madeline Rodefer was a medical secretary or a nurse at the United States Government Air Force. Madeline Rodefer presented a movie film at the Air Force, I think so, that was the, the Project Blue Book. When that would be fake, I don't believe that an employee of the government would show a fake movie film to the really high authorities of the United States Air Force and the Project Blue Book where, where, where are real professional people, uh, you know, an expert on the motion picture film and especially on the amateur film. Bob Uxler, a robotics engineer and former mission specialist of the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, is also convinced of the Rotifer film's authenticity. He believes the flight pattern indicates an energy field which enables the disk to maneuver independently of terrestrial gravitation. The uh, individual images as they came up uh, clearly showed something that you could not see with the naked eye and looking at the film or even looking at the individual prints under under close scrutiny and that there was a um, a haze if you will a very tight haze almost like a fuzzy outline uh, around the uh, the craft itself on the image now this of course compared to the trees uh, that are visible in the film uh, which were crystal clear and very well in focus in other words you have a very sharp contrast uh, you immediately might be concerned about the possibility of uh, uh, capabilities of double exposure, which is, of course, very difficult to do with a film. Uh, however, in this particular case, we found it very, very intriguing that the craft itself had very, very sharp contrasting uh, edges along where the porthole areas are and around the top of the cab, uh, but especially in the bottom portion of the craft, we began to see that there was uh, light-emitting uh, from the craft, but this was not a light such as a glow, like a reflection you'd get if somebody was projecting a light onto an object. Uh, this was rather interesting because uh, it, it tended to suggest that there was some form of energy uh, associated with the vehicle itself that was actually causing this sort of a red glow in the undercarriage area. Uh, but that, along with the uh, uh, glow that we were getting, the sort of a haze, a very, very distinct fine haze around and very, very close to the craft itself through the images uh, suggested that there was uh, an actual radiation effect uh, 
almost, uh, I guess you could liken it to a mirage effect. People are fairly familiar with uh, when you uh, ride down the highway during the summer uh, and you look across and you can see the heat rising and it, t it tends to distort images that are behind uh, the, the mirage. Well, this is very similar to the effect that we saw on this object. Uh, suggesting several things. One, that you were actually looking at a three-dimensional object as something that was superimposed onto the film. Uh, that, uh, again, suggested credibility with regard to the film. Uh, and secondly, it suggested that there was technology associated with it. This was not just uh, you know, a trash can lid or something that was just casually thrown up in the air while filming was going on. So uh, began to become much more encouraged with what I was seeing. Uh, and the more I began to look into the individual segments, uh, the, the film itself, the motion, we began to see things uh, that you might uh, liken to a distortion. In other words, the craft itself uh, physically changed shape. Now, not the whole craft, but it seemed that portions of the craft changed shape. Now, this was a product either of uh, what you might call an optical illusion as a result of the technology associated with the craft, the method uh, that it used to maintain its levitated state uh, uh, to violate gravity, uh, or it was a, a mechanical apparatus associated with the craft itself. We noticed that uh, the ball structure in the bottom of the craft, uh, in concert with the receding of these individual structures, uh, that the one portion of the craft had an indentation that would go in every time this one ball would go up and then it would come back out into a round uh, uh, disc, a uh, circular area. So I, I think that uh, these features all collectively, more than anything else, uh, and even more than the testimony of, uh, of Madeline wrote it for herself and uh, the uh, historical testimony uh, of George Adamski prior to, uh, to his death regarding this, this particular event uh, all tend to suggest that uh, we are probably dealing with an authentic case. And uh, I think it's time that uh, uh, perhaps some researchers of historical value would probably want to go back and take a much closer look at the George Adamski case uh, in its entirety. There were many attempts to discredit him, all of which I feel have successfully failed. First of all, they try to debunk his pictures and cannot do so successfully. They've claimed they were water coolers, and that was proven wrong. They tried to say they were models, and that was proven wrong. They've been orthographically projected, biomedically radiation tests. Now they start to go through computer testing. Adamski's photographs have gone through more tests in the last 50 years than any other photograph out there, and have stood the test of time. And I wonder if the rest of the pictures could, su could sustain such the same test as his had. But why do you think... Um, but why do they still uh, question the reality of his experiences? Discrediting him and his message. <laughs> Adamski stood for things which are not so popular in today's uh, UFO movement. First of all, he did not believe in psychism or mysticism in this field. We felt that that belief was a different field that had nothing to do with UFOs because these people come from worlds where they believe in the meaning and essence of life. They don't believe that something else, whether it's the stars, whether it's the future, or anybody else is responsible for their actions. They are responsible for their actions. And so this type of information is what people tend to attack on Adamski. And he was not attacked by the officials as venomously as he is by the rest of the people in the UFO field, because they feel threatened by the type of information he gave them. In September 1967, Steckling himself had a spectacular UFO sighting. In 1967, my father, mother, and I were on lecture tour in Germany, and we were traveling from Mannheim on the train, and we witnessed, along with the passengers on board this train, a armada of what we would call spacecraft or UFOs appearing and disappearing above the train, I'd say around 10,000 feet. And my father, with his 8 millimeter camera, filmed the sequence of these craft and as the film rolls, you can see the crafts appear and disappear in formation. 
and you can see the motion of the trees moving by as the train is in motion, so the craft are behind the trees, not in front of it. <coughs> and um, it's quite an interesting piece of film. Uh, it was reported in the newspaper the next day, the German newspaper for that particular area. On our way back from Schifferstadt to Frankfurt, 